Hi, Steve Schlegel here. I wanted to share some thoughts with you that I'm talking to clients about right now, which is whether they should split their company up, divide it into multiple companies, maybe two or more. And you might say, why would I ever want to do that? You know, I've got everything running. It's all together. It's kind of nice having one business that encompasses these different products or service lines that I get involved in. But here's the deal. One thing that we know about the future is that we don't know about the future. And so the best way to deal with uncertainty is diversification. And when you diversify your business, you'll take and look at, are there some significant uh, areas that we work in, that we provide services or products in that could logically be broken into multiple companies. I might be interested in selling this portion of my business. Well, then that tells you that's a particular product or service line that could be a separate company right now, even before a sale. So the first reason that I might want to do that is flexibility, because I don't know what the future holds. If in fact I'm running my company as two or three companies, it gives me some flexibility to deal with some of the issues that may come up down the road. And what are those issues? Well, one of them is asset protection. We know, especially in difficult economies, people are more likely to sue than they might have been before because uh, for a lot of businesses, money's tight and they want to find any way they can to bring some dollars in. So we have very much a more uh, a society that is more interested in pursuing you and your business. Now, if you split your business, let's just pretend we're splitting it into three businesses. If we're able to split it into three businesses based on logical product or service offerings, we'll find that from an asset protection point of view, if somebody sues business number one, the other two businesses and their assets are protected from that lawsuit. And so that's one good reason right there. Don't let it all go down. If it's all in one place and creditors or there's a lawsuit and they go against you, um, all of the assets are subject to those creditor claims. You presumably formed a corporation or an LLC to try and shield your personal assets from claims. But what about business claims? Business claims are going to go against the business itself and they're not protected. And so by splitting out and having various businesses, you'll find that you have a better level of asset protection. Then second, when we're looking at what our opportunities are down the road, if you, you know, you're likely either going to sell your business or you're going to pass it on to a family member through your estate after you die. But most people end up selling their business at one point. And if you sell that business and you really have two or three different product lines and could have two or three different companies, putting them all together creates a situation where the buyer has to buy all of those areas of your business and they may not want to. I've seen too many times a buyer come in and say, I'm interested in this and I'm interested in this, but not that. Um, so you create some flexibility. If they want it all, they can buy all three. But if they don't want it all, then they can buy the portions that they're really interested in and at least you'll get the sale done. So it creates some flexibility on a sale. And part of that, part of making that happen is having separate books and records. Now you think about it. If I come in and you've got those three product or service lines in one business and I am a buyer looking to buy it and I say, I want these two, but not that third one, you're going to have to try to break your books apart going back. And usually a buyer is going to want to look at the last five years and they're going to want to see how profitable those two business lines were without the third one in there. And however you try to construct those, I as the buyer am not going to believe what you did because I'll assume that you stuck more expenses on that third company that I'm not buying to make the first two look more profitable to me so that I would pay you more. So I distrust any information that you give me, which makes it harder to get a sale done. But if I have separate books and records for each of the three companies, then it becomes very easy to present that information. It's very much more believable. And I've worked through this situation many times in real life, and that's how it works. So you create more flexibility for yourself, whether you're dealing with a sale, whether you're passing assets on to your family, how you want to divide it up, whether you're worried about asset protection, and you should be, to go ahead and take a look at that. Now that's 
can be a really big decision in some cases. So you're going to want to make sure that all of your advisors are on board with you and agree that this is the road for you to go down. But I encourage you to think about it because with the uncertainty of the future, let's be flexible and keep the maximum number of options open for us.